Hi, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be looking at the Hampton 4 wood burning stove. So this stove has been specifically designed for small spaces, whether that be a small fireplace, an outbuilding, a home office, a yurt, cabin, anything like that really. So it's sort of quite a small little stove. But the advantage of this stove is that it actually can still fit a good size piece of wood into it. Sometimes when you get these sort of really small compact units, especially if they've got a multi-fuel grate in an ash pan, you find that the fireboxes are really small, you can barely fit anything in them at all, and it's almost not worth bothering with. So the good thing about this unit, you can actually fit a fairly good size log into it. Best thing to do is to get it started with a few small pieces of wood, allow the embers to build up, and then you can get to a fairly good size chunks of wood. So these are sort of about 240 millimeters long, and the standard logs that come in the and the kiln dried crates that you can buy online as well. So quite useful in regards to that. So looking at the stove itself, we'll start from sort of the top down and just talk about the stove in general. So this one actually is based around the Hampton 5 model, which has been sold for a number of years. Really popular stove, a stove that I really like myself and a lot of installers like to fit just because of the quality is really good, easy to use and quite a forgiving stove as well. Um, when I say forgiving, I mean, good on chimneys that aren't always too favourable, something that very much overlooked a lot of the time, especially on modern stoves that have multiple baffles in place, which work very well on uh, test condition chimneys, but aren't necessarily very forgiving if you don't have that type of chimney. So if you are in an outbuilding in a yurt, which doesn't have a great chimney, can be slightly more forgiving than other um, modern eco-designed stoves. So coming down here is a five inch flue pipe, five inch outlet on top. It's also DEFRA approved uh, for use in smoke free zones and it's also eco design ready. The model we have here actually has the DEFRA stop removed. So it's really easy to remove, you don't require that. So if you're going onto a six inch chimney system um, or if you're not in a smoke free zone or if it's going to be in an out office and it's not applicable, that can be removed. And pretty much what that does is that allows it to be fully closed off, but I'll come down to closing it off when we get further down the stove. So on here you can see, so a little drip from the kettle just on there. Um, we've got the custom rear flue box on the back here, which is a popular option, which leaves the whole top free. Um, on top of here at the moment, we actually have the Hampton cook plate. We also do one for the bigger panoramic stoves as well. It's pretty much just an easy clean cooker top, uh, which helps protect the paint and just looks quite nice as well. Also has a pan rail, so if you want a boat and you want to prevent it from moving off, that's quite good too. So it does get plenty hot enough, as I just found out there, <laughs> um, to cook on, despite the fact here, this one's actually got the little spaces on, which isn't quite touching the top. It's worth noting that if you, didn't, you don't have to buy this, you can cook on the stove itself. They do get plenty hot enough to cook on. This is mainly to help it easy to clean, protect the top, and just looks quite nice as well. Um, in my opinion. And then moving down the stove, it's got a full steel body and cast iron door. And it's also worth now quickly noting quite a key feature of this stove, which is the heat shield option. So I'll just quickly lean over here and show you it. It's effectively this here, which is gonna, which goes around, that's not a very good description, sorry. <laughs> it's this here anyway. Uh, you can see the pictures of how it looks online within place but pretty much it helps to reduce the distances to combustibles at the side so it reduces them down providing you're using a twin wall flue which is isn't uh, down to just 200 millimeters at the rear and 250 millimeters at the side perfect for if you're having it in a corner and you've got plasterboard walls or wooden wall or a cabin like that really quite important to have that if you're going into a brick fireplace not required Sometimes people do misunderstand the requirements for the heat shields. They confuse combustibles and non-combustibles. You only need to buy that if you're surrounding it with a combustible material. It's also, whilst we're talking about combustibles, it's also suitable for 12 millimeter half, which is perfect. So in here we have a pretty much a wooden floor with glass half on the bottom here. Uh, so it doesn't exceed 100 C at the base, so it's suitable for a glass half. Again, something which is really good for if you're having it, cabin, outbuilding, anything like that. And then, as I mentioned, sorry, the cast iron door and then going into the stove is the full vermiculite fire brick lining with a baffle plate, which has the holes in at the back here. As you can probably see the air rushing through those. 
So what happens is the air comes in through the spigot at the rear, direct air feed coming in through the rear, the air rushes up through the holes in the baffle plate and also comes down on the glass as well. What happens is that creates sort of like a tumbling effect, helping to keep the glass clean and the heat inside the stove. So currently this is actually burning quite fast and you don't really want to keep the vent fully open. So what I'm going to do now is just close it off and I'll show you how it reacts. I should be able to just... You can see an instant reaction there. This doesn't have the defro stop in place, bear in mind, but it will still close off nicely. Even with the little stop in place, I tried it earlier, works nicely with it. You can see it's completely died off. That just shows how well that's working. And then when I open it up, you'll be surprised at how it reacts. That worked well. <laughs> A big curtain of air rushes down um, onto the stove as the air shoots back into the fire. It just shows the, how well the stove's built, well constructed, good seals on the stove, and really burning efficiently. So you can see here, I've just got a nice bed of actually slowly build it up on the embers on the bottom here and just try and keep those hot embers in the base and then adding wood to that before the embers die out is the key really. It makes it so much easier, maintains the heat inside the fireplace, a hot fire is a happy fire. And then if I was to put a piece of wood in here now, I wouldn't even need to leave the door ajar, open the vent a little bit, a fraction, it'll catch, it'll go and then you can just gradually close it off and then just have it just sort of trickle away a little bit more. It's hot. The glass is always the hottest piece, so you've got to be, always be careful of that. And then just going to the right here, my right, wooden handle, cool to touch, nice little feature, just kind of makes the stoves look a little bit different uh, from the standard handles. However, if you've got sort of a scheme in place in your room, you can have the brass handle with brass fittings, the brushed handles, or even just the plain black handles would look nice as well all just to kind of add that little bit of sort of exclusivity, um, nicheness, probably not the words to use, customability, <laughs> um, however you want to see it, makes it look a bit different really um, and helps it fit in with your decor, that's what I was trying to say there. Lock guard in the bottom there just helps the wood from falling forward, as mentioned it's a wood burning only unit, so you want to try and leave sort of a bed of ash in the bottom, that helps actually um, prevent breakages of the base brick as well, and also helps the embers to sort of nestle up, so it'll be blanketed inside. So if you want to burn for long periods of time with that vent closed off, you want to actually make sure you leave a little bit of ash inside. It helps to sort of for that longer prolonged burn. Um, on the bottom, got feet there, got little bolts on them. You can just unscrew them. So you've got the half, which is slightly uneven, a bit wobbly. You can just unscrew those and then sort of balance it out. Um, and what else were we going to say about the stove? Sorry, completely forgotten. Um, kilowatt output, yes. So it goes to sort of around about 2.7 kilowatt up to 5.7 kilowatt. So that shows it's really good for small spaces, but actually quite good for sort of small to medium sized spaces. So we've got a fireplace, which is really small, but actually in quite a good sized room it will give out some good heat. It does give out some good heat because I'm sat here now and this leg is very hot. So don't just think this is sort of a very small underpowered stove which isn't going to give much heat. It really does pack a punch and that mainly is because of the actual size it's got inside. It's got the capability to put some big chunks of wood in. Uh, in here at the moment, you know, I'm just burning some silver birch. Um, but if you know, if you were to get that nice and hot on silver birch or softer woods, and then place some harder woods inside, it will burn for a very long time and give out a really good amount of heat. Um, I think it's gonna be a popular unit, if anything, to go by with the Hampton 5. Um, and I'm sure we've missed some stuff, but I think that's about it for now. I hope this all gives you a nice insight into the stove. I'm just gonna close it off again and then open it back up just to show you one more time. Probably should wear the glove for that because it is rather warm. And then off we go. I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, we'll always be happy to help. Thank you.